Now, this is where I really love my my anal retentive students. You guys know what that means? Freaky. It just means people that like to use uh, colored, colored pencils and they wrap things up really well and stuff. So if you want to use colored pencils, that's awesome. Uh, or if you don't, I understand. Right? Um, people shade in one color, shade another color. It's awesome. Said if you see a line, you draw a line. All right. So if you see a line, draw a line. If you don't, it's dots. So then we got a solid line there. And which way am I going to shade? If you use zero zero, is zero bigger than zero minus five? Is zero bigger than negative five? Yes. So then now watch one. I'm just going to put a couple arrows there so my picture doesn't get too crazy. So that's perfectly fine. So I shaded that way because zero, 0, worked. So all the answers must be on that same side. So on top of that, if I do this dude, his y-intercept is 0, 2. And from there I go down 1, over this way 3, right? Positive. They're not both negative, right? And what kind of line is it going to be? Dotted line because it's not equal to that line. So there's like a whole bunch of little open circles there. And then, I keep forgetting to show you the shortcut on this. But again, if I put 0, is 0 less than 0 plus 2? Is 0 less than 2? Yes. yes. So again, I'm going to shade in the direction of 0 this way. So where would the shadings overlap? In the mouth of this alligator here, right? So let me lay that. So every point in this region has to work in both. Every point in this region... What's true about that point? It doesn't work in either one. Right? And I keep reading. The way I say I don't use test points. And this is a little bit difficult, so let me see. Not difficult, but uh, like this first one, it was greater, so I'm going to shade up. This one was less, so I'm going to shade down. It's just that when it gets really steep, up and down is hard to tell. It's all left and right. And what the hell is up and down when it's like that? These weren't that steep, so it's not that bad. Or you can just always use a test point, whichever way makes more sense. I like it. So can you imagine, I could even put a third thing in here. I will. What if x is greater than 3? How would you graph that? How do you graph x equals 3? How do you graph that line? What kind of line would that be? Beautiful. x cannot change. x must always be 3, so it would have to be like this. If x changes, it would move left to right. It can't move left and right. It's got to be straight up and down. So at 3, it's going to be what kind of line? 3. And let's make it negative 3, sorry. I want to be down here. So then, bang, 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 bang. Shade to the right side. Shade up from there. So it would be everything in that triangle now, right? So that would be my safe region. If Fred's there, it's nice knowing Fred. Something bad's about to happen to you. Right? Poor Fred. So there are some in the homework that just have one variable in them. If it was y greater than something, what would that look like? Horizontal. Beautiful. Horizontal at 7, and you shade up. So those are just special cases when they only have one variable. But I'm doing it on two-variable plane. All right. Good, good, good. Yes, sir? Do you uh, change the equality sign because you want to 
Oh yeah, uh, I'm glad you said that. I, I, I want to show you something. So some of you guys, when you solve for y in this equation, I'm almost certain that some of you did this here, right? Is that cool? And then divide by negative one. So then y and then ask to switch. Now, uh, here's the way I do it. These just switch. I don't know if you realize that. It's a beautiful thing about algebra. I add the y, subtract the 5. So then I just do that. Right? Is that, did it start off as greater than? No. That's what's going on. So here's the original one. I add the y, subtract the 5. Now if I read it this way, what's it say? Y bigger than 2x minus 5. Yeah, cool. Don't do it that way if it's confusing. But that's the way I always do it, so I don't have to do negatives. But I, I hope you understand that explains. I could either leave y on this side, so when I divide by negative, the sign's got to switch. And here's a whole other reason why it must switch, because I could have put it on the other freaking side. So it's not that the sign switched, it's that my y actually switched what side of the sign it was on. Does that? It's got to agree either way I do it. So that's why if you leave the y as negative, if you've got to switch the sign, another reason you've got to do it is because otherwise it would have been on the other side of the damn sign. So of course you've got to switch it. Oh, so you guys are like, what the hell grammar are you using? Does that sentence make sense? All right. So as long as you understand one way or the other, that's cool. Do it one way or the other. All right. So a little preview. And then I'll let us out our earliest. I said not to get used to it, but... You already noticed that I, I lie sometimes. Um, the thing with section 10.4, uh, let me show you an example of this. We know how to handle this. So what's the answers? Yes. So we should realize now that if I introduce an inequality, I should get a, a possibility of a lot more answers, right? An infinite number of answers. So if I said this, that gets very interesting. And the reason this is more difficult than what we were doing before is because this is now a product instead of just, if it was just that, we know how to do that. That's easy. But now it's a product. How the hell do I do that? So what, another way to look at this is, this says that this number times this number has to be positive or zero. You with me? The part positive, the part positive or zero. Because it's greater than or equal to zero. Yeah. The part positive. Or they could both be negative. Uh, beautiful. And the reason you don't want to go down that route is because I can just add another thing here. Yeah, so we want a method that no matter how many little parts there are to it, it'll be about as difficult to do or about as easy. Right. And so visually, I want you to understand, what would this look like if I graphed it? Can somebody help me with that? If I multiply this out, what is it? What do I get? Square. S squared plus crap. So what, what's it going to look like? Parabola. Yeah. And so if I have a parabola that opens up, where is it positive? Outside of its intercepts. Do you see that? So that answer is going to come out of something like this, right? So we're going to, to develop on Monday, because I can feel that all your brains are very fried. Uh, we're going to develop an algebraic process that will actually be simpler than anything you're thinking of, probably, uh, to, to tackle that. And then I don't care if I add a few more things on there. It, it'll be just as easy to do. We're going to tackle this when? Monday? Monday. And then once we get done with that, the first part of Monday, the rest of the class period will be, due, uh, will be reviewed. Yeah. Enjoy your weekend. That's right. So, that was this line here, right? So, plus zero, zero, zero is big.
bigger than negative five. So that's true. Uh, that works. So you got to shade that way. So in a way, if it's false, you shade coordinate. Yeah, he's more than